Hi everyone, Mike here from Bikes by Mike with another cycling related video. So I'm back upstairs to talk to you about bike tools, specifically torque wrenches. I'll review the Nano Torque Bar DX, which Topeak claims is the slimmest and most compact preset torque wrench available. Okay, let's get to it. As with every other product review I've done, I'm not getting paid for this review. I bought this tool with my own money, so if I'm unhappy with it, I'll gladly tell you. Now, before I get into my review of the Nano Torque Bar DX, just a few comments on torque wrenches and bicycle tools in general. First, on torque wrenches. In years gone by, where steel and aluminum frames and parts were the norm, one could get away with not owning a torque wrench, as it was more difficult to damage components in the process of tightening down bolts. But bikes today are simply lighter and more delicate than they were in the past. Partly because bike manufacturers are continuously looking to shed material from components to save weight, but mostly it's due to the shift from metals like steel, aluminum, and titanium to carbon fiber. And while carbon fiber has some excellent qualities, it is finicky when it comes to torque. Too much torque and you risk cracking the carbon, too little torque and you risk slippage. There are dozens of bolts on a bike that need to be properly torqued, but they all fall into two main categories, low torque and high torque bolts. The low torque bolts are more delicate connections with maximum torque settings below say 15 newton meters of force. Here we're talking about things like seat post clamps, saddle rail clamps, handlebar bolts, shifter lever clamps, chain ring bolts and rear derailleur hanger mounts. Then we have high torque bolts of around 25 newton meters and above. Things like crank arm bolts, cassette lock rings, and brake rotor mounts. And these are just the more common bolts you'll find on a bike that require very specific torque settings. There are many, many more, as you can see here, with a complete list of Shimano torque specifications. I've heard riders and bike mechanics say, I don't need to use a torque wrench because I know what X newton meters of force feels like. Reality check, no you don't. You may think you're that good, but you're not. Test yourself with and without the use of a torque wrench and see how you do. The average person can't tell the difference between four newton meters of force and 12 newton meters of force, not to mention the subtle differences between four and five newton meters. The problem is that most people don't want to drop the big bucks on a torque wrench. And unfortunately, because the range of torque settings used on all the different bolts on a bike are so broad, you can't get away with just one torque wrench that does it all. You'll need one for low torque bolts and one for high torque bolts. And there are a lot of people like me that didn't own a torque wrench for many years, but at some point finally bit the bullet and bought a low torque setting wrench to deal with the most delicate components. And I guess if you can only afford to buy one torque wrench, I guess it is the lower torque one you'd want to have. But if you watch episode two of my Cycling Western North Carolina video, you'll see why it's so important to properly tighten high torque components as well. So whether you're a home mechanic or not, if you own a bike, you need to own two torque wrenches. Okay, that's enough of the lecture. When it comes to bicycle tools, you get much more bang for your buck, usually, by buying non-bicycling specific tools. Tools that you'd find at your local hardware or automotive store. Generally speaking, I find these non-bicycling specific tools to be as good, if not better, than the bike specific offerings, and you'll get more for your money. The bicycling industry is very small and not nearly as competitive as the automotive and construction industries and the various trades, and the prices reflect that. So if I have the choice between buying tools manufactured by a bike company versus a general purpose tool company, I will usually choose the non-bike specific tool. Let's take the torque wrench I bought just a few weeks ago. The one I bought was the Craftsman 3 8 inch drive torque wrench, which retails for $79.99 Canadian. It really does work well, and it comes with a plastic carrying case, which is nice. It has a minimum torque setting of 27 newton meters of force and maximum setting of 136. So all the range you need for the higher torque bolts on a bike. Now compare that to the Park Tool TW 6.2 torque wrench, 
which is one of the more popular bike-specific torque wrenches on the market. It retails for $130.95 Canadian. So the Craftsman is about 40% cheaper than the equivalent Park Tool. You'll find similar price differences when looking at other types of tools. Okay, now that's out of the way, onto my review of the Topeak Nano Torque Bar DX. And this is a case where a bike-specific tool does outperform its competitors quite easily. That's because it's designed for very specific use and serves that purpose really well. I'm in the hunt these days for light traveling tools. I recently purchased a small FUMPA electrical pump to replace my clunky floor pump. Check out my review of that pump in a future episode. And next on my list to buy was a small torque wrench. Up until now, I was taking my Pedro's shop torque wrench on trips, but weighing in at close to one kilogram is just too big and bulky for travel. I wanted the smallest torque wrench that gave me all the functionality I need for travel. For me, that means being able to torque bolts for the seat post clamp, saddle rails, handlebars, and stem. These are the ones most likely to need adjusting on a trip. For my Candel Super 6, that means having at least a four and five millimeter hex key and torque setting options of four and five newton meters at an absolute minimum. I also wanna be able to use the tool as a simple hex wrench to tighten and loosen bolts before applying the final torque setting. Lastly, while I don't plan on carrying a torque wrench on rides, I still want one that is small enough to carry in a saddlebag should I find the need to do so. Looking at the specs on the Topeak, it checks all the right boxes. It has the added benefit of having T20 and T25 torque bits, which you see quite often on mountain bikes. And it also has a four newton meter preset torque. So on paper, the Topeak Nano Torque Bar DX seems perfect for my needs. Let's now check it out to see how well it performs. So out of the box, this is what you get. You get your little storage case here that holds your three torque control adapters, your three hex keys, and your two torques. And you also get the handle. So this is your wrench itself, which has, it's quite handy, it has this in internal storage feature here. So what I like to do is I take my most common bits, which is probably the uh, four and five millimeters hex keys and put it in there. Oops, slide it into the compartment. And at the end, at this end, you can put your torque control adapter. And again, probably use, put the one that's most common which is the five millimeter, and just like that. So you have a compact little uh, torque wrench with your storage of a couple of keys and your torque adapter. So many times you wanna travel light, you might just wanna take this, but if you want all the options available to you, of course you're going, gonna to wanna to take the case with all the bits included. So there are three ways that you can actually use this torque wrench, which is really quite handy. The first two don't use the torque setting, don't use the torque adapter. Um, and I'll show you those first. So taking this knot stem as an example, and let's just say that you want to unscrew some bolts or just loosely tighten them to get it started before you torque it to the appropriate setting. And there's two ways to do that. So the first way is you put it, the bit directly in the end of the handle without the torque adapter. And then it's not a ratcheting effect, but you can tighten or loosen the bolts as you like that way. So the other way is to Take the bit out, take the inside, or take the outer sleeve out, take out your torque adapter, put the bit at the end, and now you can use it like a screwdriver. So again, if it's very loose, and if you just want to loosen bolts or loosely tighten them, you can just do it like that. 
as if it's a screwdriver. So that's really quite handy. And the last way is using the torque adapter. So take my bit out of the end, put my handle back on. I'll put the torque adapter. And right now, did a double check, yeah. So as you can see, the stem requires five Newton meters of force. And I'm using a four millimeter hex key. So I start off by putting the torque control adapter in the handle and then my bit. And this is only used to tighten down bolts. And that's an important point. You don't want to use the torque adapter, any of the three, to loosen bolts or to uh, loosely tighten bolts. This is only meant for uh, calibrating to the final torque setting. If you use it in other ways, particularly to loosen bolts, you could damage or you'll likely damage the internal calibration mechanism here. And you certainly don't want to do that. So that's why you use the other two methods for loosening bolts, tightening and loosely tightening bolts. Does that make sense? Loosely tightening bolts. But uh, use this for the final torque setting. And it's not a ratcheting effect, but it's similar to other torque wrenches that you tighten to the point that you feel and you hear a slight click. Now, the click on this is not particularly loud. So you wanna go slow and just be a bit careful, but it is absolutely there. So now that I've loosely tightened this bolt, I'm going to now keep turning it until I hear that click. Right there. So not sure if the camera caught that. I could easily hear it and I can actually feel it a bit. Certainly it's not as loud and you don't feel that click as much as a shop tool torque wrench, but it is there. So now a quick weigh in of the Topeak Nano. First with the handle, the two bits, and the torque adapter, the single torque adapter, and it's 65 grams. Adding the other bits in the storage case brings it to a total weight of 147 grams. So you can see that this tiny torque wrench does quite a lot. So much so that it could almost double for a shop torque wrench. I know some people have commented that the price of the tool is too high. I think the price is reasonable given that many shop torque wrenches are much more expensive. And yes, this is more expensive than a typical bicycle multi-tool, but I think this tool leans more towards a shop tool given its functionality and quality of construction. The only thing I'd like to see improved are the acoustics. I'd like the click you hear when reaching the desired torque setting to be a bit louder like what you hear on regular torque wrenches. In a quiet environment, like inside the garage, I could hear the click well enough. But in a noisy outdoor environment, I doubt very much I'd be able to feel or hear the click, which means I run the risk of over torquing a bolt. Something to consider. So my final verdict, I give it an overall score of nine out of 10, an excellent tool for travel. So that's pretty much it for my review of the Topeak Nano Torque Bar DX, an impressive, versatile, and super lightweight tool ideal for traveling. I look forward to bringing you along on my next trip to Lake Placid in a few weeks. That's all I've got for today, folks. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And if you're not a subscriber to this channel, please subscribe as it allows me to produce more content for all of you. See you next time. Happy rolling.